Hi and welcome to this video with a summary of the main rules in the standard IS40 investment property. This standard is applied for various types of immovable tangible assets like buildings or lands and within the next few minutes you'll learn not only when to apply IS40 but also how to apply it. I am Sylvia of ifrsbox.com and I help people understand and simplify IFRS. I have created the IFRS kit, a complex IFRS course for you, plus lots of free IFRS materials, so you're welcome to check them out at ifrsbox.com. IS40 belongs to the older standards, as it was issued some time ago. Well, in its current version, it's applicable for the period starting on or after 1st January 2005, but of course there were some minor changes as other standards developed. The objective of IS40 is to prescribe accounting treatment and require disclosure for investment property. But what is the investment property? It is a land or building or a part of it or both. So you can see here, we speak solely about immovable tangible assets. And that is held for either to earn rentals or for capital appreciation. It means to make money on increasing prices on the real estate market or for both. So investment property is not held for use in the production or supply of goods or services or for administrative purposes. It is also not held for the sale in the ordinary course of business. So here you need to focus on the purpose. Why are you holding a building or land? How are you monetizing it? How do you make money from it? If it's the first three, then use IS40. If it's for a production or admin purposes, use IS-16 and in the last instance use IS-2 in most cases. Let's talk about when to recognize investment property in your financial statements. You can do it when two conditions are met. It is probable that the future economic benefits that are associated with the investment property will flow to the entity. Well, think about associated rewards and risks and the cost of the investment property can be measured reliably. This rule is very similar to the rule in IS-16 for property plan and equipment, so maybe you are familiar with that. How do we measure investment property initially? That is, when it's recognized in the financial statements for the first time. We do it at cost, including the transaction cost, and the main components of cost are purchase price, well, this is clear and any directly attributable expenditures, and here there are items like professional or legal fees. Be careful, because we do not include any startup expenses to investment property, well, unless they are directly attributable to that property. We also don't include any operating losses in pre-operation stage or until reaching a full capacity, and abnormal waste of materials, labor, and other resources incurred at development of investment property. Let me also tell you that the cost shall be measured at cash price equivalent. So if the payment for the investment property is deferred to some future point, then you need to discount it to the present value. How do we measure investment property subsequently, that is after the first reporting period? You have two options here. The first option is to use fair value model. Here, the investment property is measured at fair value. Well, simple as that. I'll talk about the fair value model in more details a bit later, but let me stress here, fair value model is not the same as revaluation model under IS-16. Please remember it and be cautious about it because many people get it wrong. The second choice is to apply cost model. Under cost model, you measure investment property at cost, less accumulated depreciation, less impairment loss, if any. Before I move to add some details, let me stress that you should use one model for all of your investment property, well, with some exceptions. Let's discuss fair value model first. Under this model, the investment property should be measured at fair value, so it means that you should revalue the investment property at least at the end of each reporting period. The rules for fair value measurement are stipulated in the standard IFRS 13 fair value measurement and you can find a video dedicated to IFRS 13 in this channel too. 
Gain or loss from remeasurement is recognized in profit or loss statement and a journal entry is to debit profit or loss, loss from fair value measurement, and credit the investment property. Well, if there's a gain, then you make the opposite entry. Under fair value model, you do not charge any depreciation and that's the main difference from revaluation model. If you're not able to measure fair value reliably, the under standard prescribes different treatment based on whether your investment property is under construction or not. If it's under construction and not yet completed, then you need to keep it at cost until you can measure fair value reliably or the construction is completed. If it is completed investment property, then you might need to keep it using cost model under IS-16. But let me tell you, this should be very rare only when there is no active market and IS-40 assumes that in most cases you should be able to measure fair value of investment property reliably. The second choice is a cost model and we will not explain it in detail here because you should look to the standard IS-16 property plan and equipment. The standard IS-40 refers you there too. If an asset is classified as held for sale or in a disposal group, then you should apply IFRS 5, non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. Now let me mention a few words about transfers of assets to or from investment property. Well, you can do it, but only when there's a change in use. For example, when you start using a building for your own headquarters and you rented it out previously, then you can transfer it from investment property to property plan and equipment under IS-16. Finally, let's explain when investment property needs to be derecognized from the financial statements. It's either on disposal, by sale or entering into a finance lease, or when it's permanently withdrawn from use and the economic benefits are no longer expected. When you derecognize an investment property, then you shall calculate gain or loss as net disposal proceeds, less carrying amount, and it shall be recognized in profit or loss. Well, we have just summed up the standard IS-40 investment property. And if you'd like to learn a bit more, you're welcome to check ifrsbox.com, subscribe to our free newsletter and receive many useful IFRS articles, videos and other materials. Bye bye and thank you for watching.